Radio Network. That's an add on to the TV schedule. Blues get the puck at center ice, shoot it in. Remember, fighting majors to Richardson at Pearson in 1949 of period number one. Neither will be available here in the early going of the second period and right from the puck being cleared into the blue zone that's cleared out and deflects out of play right below us and we'll have a face off in the blue zone near Grant Fuel. Well Wayne Gretzky in the first period had eight shifts and he played a total of eight minutes and 22 seconds of that first period. As we mentioned he put in 28 minutes in the 65 minute game in Vancouver the other night Al McKinnis led all the Blues players with 35 minutes played and Brett Hall at 32 in that game. The face off between Gretzky and 22 year old Todd Marchant Gretzky on with Corson and Hall McKinnis and Barron Barron has the puck in his own end off the far boards to Hall pass ahead to flex to Barron and he'll backhand the puck in puck behind the Edmonton net left for Marchman far side it gets away from McCammon quick shot by McGinnis and the puck caught by Joseph he clears it ahead far wing for Scott Thornton he has trouble then it's played by defenseman Jeff Norton at his own line ahead now for McCammon right wing for Bookberger he'll shoot what a save oh baby what a save on the rebound oh I don't believe that save by Fure on the rebound taking a goal from Dean McCammon it does not get any better than that one. Well Fuhr had to make a great save first on Kelly Bookberger right there through a screen and then all the room for McCammon and Grant Fuhr with the quickness in his right hand just reaches out he reached all the way across his body to catch the puck. There's the screenshot first and then the reaction with the right glove. Oh boy what a save by Fjord. As tough as the rebound save was, Buckberger really had him really making a great play on the initial shot. He let it go. Yeah, he did. He let it go. It was hard, and there were three or four players between the puck and Grant Fjord, so he had to pick it up through a screen of players. Now the play in the Edmonton zone, right in front of the net, it comes to Miranoff. Out at center ice to Seeger. Now to Waite. Waite has trouble with the puck. He's a good stick handler, plays it near side. Shatan plays it back to the defense. Miranoff up the middle to Seeger. Now to wait. One man back. Crab Chuck and a shot just wide of the near post. Kept in by Seeger. Into the corner. Wade. He overskates. Well covered. Now it's centered by Shatan. He's well covered. The puck turned away. Wade along the near boards. Back to the point. And a Miranoff shot stopped by Fuhr. And this Oilers line is playing well on this shift. Wade leaves the puck. Or I should say Shatan does for weight trying to center Krabchuk has it get away it comes to wait on a feed from Shatan but the puck knocked away to center ice now both teams looking to change players and the Oilers shoot the puck into the blue zone one nothing blues lead just past the two minute mark in the second period Pronger has the puck stolen by Anderson to Tchaikovsky behind the net he's knocked down gets the puck back in the corner feeds in front Pronger knocks it away he takes out Anderson and the puck caught in skates played by Zezel knocked away here's Jason Arnott taken to the boards in the Blues end by Zezel the puck centered and intercepted by Igor Kravchuk ahead to Noonan from his side of the red line he'll slide the puck all the way to Curtis Joseph he stops it leaves it for Tchaikovsky he dumps it behind his net and here's Jeff Norton his pass out to center ice onto Arnott's stick left wing for Tchaikovsky around Olsen puck gets away in the corner he centers out of Ols or, uh, Anderson's reach now Seeger a shot Slager's shot right on caught by Fjord and the Oilers coming along with some life here in the second period trailing at one to nothing. We're early in the second period. Well we hope you'll join the Blues for their last big off ice event of the season the St. Louis Blues power play fashion show to benefit the Kilo Diabetes Foundation. It's coming up on Sunday the 10th one week from today. The fashion show will be held from 7 to 11 p.m. at the St. Louis Galleria and will include cocktails dinner and dancing a fashion show and a silent auction tickets are one hundred and fifty dollars for more information call four two four sixty five hundred. Well, Grant Fuhr, another good save. I believe this puck was tipped. Glenn Anderson was in front of the net. He was right there, and Fuhr had to make the save. The Blues win the draw on their own end. A pass from McKinnis too far at center ice. Now the Oilers in their zone with it. 
Marchman on with Norton. A pass ahead on to McInnes' stick. Blues on the puck at their own line. Now to Barrett. Pass ahead offside to Corson. And that'll bring a stoppage in play. 3.09 gone. Second period. The Blues up one to nothing. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. For each other. Along the near boards in the Edmonton end. The linesmen were trying to find both Arnott and Corson right after the whistle. And by the time we find, found them, Arnott was in the process of giving Corson a cross check. And they're still screaming at each other. Yeah, but what happened on the play was actually Corson that was heading back toward his end of the ice as soon as the whistle went he did a quick circle and came right back at Jason Arnott and then kind of went off to the side so he came right back at Arnott then kind of faked like he was going to do something and then Arnott with a little bit of a cross check Arnott did he's a tough kid six foot three 220 pounds what a future he has huh? 21 oh, years old he's a, he's a tremendous hockey player shoots the puck just about as well as any player in the league he's just coming off a knee injury this is his second game back he was supposed to miss another week and he came back against the Pittsburgh team two nights ago boy he is just an outstanding prospect he's going to be one of the real stars in this game for a long long time now the face off to Grant Fuhrer's left the buck drop Bookberger back to the point to Miranoff little backhand shot knocked down in front and it's just out of the reach of McCammon Corson plays the puck to Hull on with Gretzky and the pass gets away Richardson shoots it in for the Oilers Barron loses the puck Bookberger slides it through the crease wide of the goal all ahead to Corson at the red line left wing for Gretzky into the Edmonton zone a pass for Hall and then Gretzky knocked down he's hurt they don't see it yet Gretzky hurt now Corson goes after an Edmonton player gloves and sticks have been dropped Bookberger and Barron in a main event Gretzky is not moved down and injured at the Edmonton blue line right away sticks and gloves drop Bookberger and Barron going at it in a main event they're out near Gretzky Gretzky is still not moved Gretzky is motionless on the ice as Bookberger and Barron are in a wild fist fight and the other players standing around uh, Ray Barilli attending to the great one and they've got two or three other folks coming out what a sight this is the greatest player in the game motionless on the ice and a brawl going on about five feet away from him well Gretzky was somewhat off balance he made a move just outside the blue line he was going straight then made a cut to his right and put a beautiful cross ice pass under the stick of Brett Hall and it was just after the pass he was somewhat off balance and he was hit and he's moving his legs a little bit now but here's a play again here making a little bit of a move there and then takes oh he took an elbow he took an elbow to the face I believe it was Kelly Bookberger hit him right in the jaw with an elbow that's what happened Gretzky with the move here's the play here and Bookberger coming from the other side oh yeah. there's the elbow right on this right on the chin just like a punch yeah. meanwhile the fight between Bookberger and Barron is over and now Gretzky on his knees let's hope he doesn't have a broken jaw well, that's Ray Barilli the Blues trainer that's out there now attending to him it looked like for a while there he wasn't moving at all he might have been out cold while he was on the ice and that's what he's checking for right now uh, checking the jaw to see if it's still in place he's back on his feet now getting a nice ovation from the people here in Edmonton but needing help to get off the ice Kelly Bookberger boy that was a, a cheap shot and right away Murray Barron stepped in and got involved with Bookberger so the great one has to be assisted off the ice I mean he is woozy big time as he is being helped down the runway towards the dressing room here and Mick Magoo will hand out the penalties should initially get the penalty to Kelly Bookberger. Well that should be a five minute major because Gretzky's out of the way and he has to go out of his way boy he hits him with a tremendous left elbow and catches him perfectly on the jaw and it'll be interesting to see if this is more than just a minor or if there was even a minor going to be called Ken I was looking the other way I didn't see Mick Magoo whether he had his hand up or not but this could easily be a five minute major for attempt to injure it would be very tough if you're the referee right when Gretzky gets rid of the puck you're probably going to turn your attention to Hall who has a good chance of being impeded as he's going after the puck I know you and I went with a puck to see where Hall was well we'll see what the penalties are 
Well, the Blues right now, at least according to the scoreboard, find themselves shorthanded. It was difficult to see at first because Bookberger going through didn't stop at all. He just got the left up, hit him, and continued to go. And it was Murray Barron ended up seeing the play, and the Blues, believe it or not, end yeah. up shorthanded because the officials did not see the elbow. None of the three officials saw the elbow. They did see Corson try to attack Bookberger. Corson gets a minor penalty, and then Barron and Bookberger each get five for fighting. They give Corson a two-minute roughing penalty, and the Oilers go to work on the power play. They say that sometimes things in life are not quite just. And uh, again, if you're an official on the ice, you have to call what you see. And I can understand, especially Mick Magoo, not seeing that play. I know I didn't see it. Yeah, and, that, and, that, and that he called everything else right, but missed, missed the thing that got everything going, which was the elbow to Gretzky's jaw. You'd like to think that one of the linesmen might have picked it up, but it wasn't the case. Face off at center ice, McKinnis blasts the puck in, and the Oilers have it in their own zone. The Oilers 0 for 3 on the power play. They have had only two shots on three power plays. And remember, they had a 60-second two-man advantage in the first period. The Oilers shoot the puck in. Oh, Zetzel with a big hit on Zdeno Seeger. And the Blues clear the puck the length of the ice. I believe it was Jay Wells coming back. 20 uh, seconds. Yes, Jay Wells. Right, Jay Wells. Ooh. Wow, Wells out with McKinnis. Hall and Howard Chuck killing the penalty. Now Wait works in, sends the puck back to the right point to Arnott. He advances it ahead back to Arnott. Back now to Seeger and Wells intercepts and he'll backhand the puck ahead just out of Hall's reach the length of the ice. The Blues lead it one nothing and a minute ten to go in Corson's penalty. Norton works in bumped by McKinnis. Noonan back Noonan back behind his net spins away. Chatan chasing him, feeds far side for McInnes. McInnes stops, looking for some room, dumps the puck behind his net, and here's Igor Kravchuk deep in his own zone. He'll clear it off, Arnott at center ice, into the Edmonton end. Newton gets to the puck first, he's got Zezel in front, oh, and the pass about knee high, and Zezel unable to play it. Now the Oilers back, Norton ahead to Wade, over the line. Left wing, the puck gets away from Cherkowski, he leaves it in the corner. It's fed back to the blue line. Arnott a shot, and that hits Zezel. Goes high in the air and drops at center ice. And the puck played by Norton of Edmonton back in his own zone. 24 seconds to go on the Edmonton power play. Oilers with a puck at their own line. Now ahead, Wade over the red line. Into the blue zone. Wade on the near right wing in the slot for Tchaikovsky. Puck tipped ahead right to Fjord, and he'll smother it with 13 seconds to go in this Edmonton power play and the Blues leading one nothing and you would think that the uh, Blues are going to be a very unhappy crew the rest of the afternoon considering what has happened to Wayne Gretzky. Yeah I would certainly think so. Meanwhile getting back to what we were talking about earlier Ken regarding Glenn Anderson playing in Germany and then coming back he signed a contract actually with the Vancouver Canucks but, be, but because of his status they had to put him on waivers first while well, Edmonton knew there was another team that was trying to make the playoffs that was going to pick them up in fact they put in a claim but Edmonton was able to step in because of their record and grab Glenn Anderson now when it comes to the trade deadline the team that was going to claim him in initially has the first chance to reclaim him should he go on waivers or if there's a trade that's the team that Glenn, Glenn Sather has to deal with first. So what does Glenn Sather figure? Hey I make a little move here. I might get myself in a deal a young player trying to further build this team. Not a bad move at all. Cherkowski at the St. Louis line feeds the puck in to Anderson offside. The penalty is over to Corson. One nothing Blues in the second period. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Folks planning to take your car to the dealer car X muffler and brake says put those plans on ice. You could buy blues playoff tickets with the money you'll save at car X save a bundle call the car X man. Blues one Oilers no score McKinnis a power play goal at 327 of the first period. Wayne Gretzky is in the first aid room here at the Edmonton Coliseum. And now twist is on with Corson and Hall and McKinnis has the puck in his own end teamed with Wells because Barron is serving a five minute fighting penalty twist gets a pass shoots the puck in Miranoff back to play it up the far side Tchaikovsky now to McCammon he's hit by 
Corson twist has the puck. His pass ahead intercepted. Gets it back. Then Corson a little shot wide. Hull trying to center. McCammon knocks the puck to the corner. Hull plays it behind the Edmonton net to Corson. Now back near side for Hull. Wells pinching in. Puck along the boards and it's played by the Oilers. Not out. Quick shot by Twist after Anderson fails to clear. Knocked to the corner. Corson battling Dean McCammon there. Corson along the boards. Tchaikovsky steals the puck. And the Oilers European star trying to get to center ice knocked off balance and the puck finally poked deep by Corson Richardson back feeds it up the far wing Tchaikovsky gets it ahead McCammon check loose puck at center ice tipped to the Blues line then Kravchuk a far wing pass for Pearson knocked away by Richardson and the puck shot in by Pronger things getting a bit chippy we're in the second period Hudson knocks the puck down along the near boards in the Edmonton end crab chuck a shot hits McCammon we've got a penalty coming up the Oilers touch the puck and there'll be a penalty called against Edmonton for holding Luke Richardson had lost his stick out at center ice when he collided with Rob Pearson they had fought earlier in the game and then later Richardson does a little holding without his stick. He ended up holding Dale Howarchuk. Howarchuk actually overskated the puck. Then he just grabs onto Howarchuk's stick as he was trying to get back in, in the play. And the Blues will have a power play. They lead it 1 0. And we still do not have any type of report from the Blues locker room yet regarding the status of Wayne Gretzky, who was hit with that vicious elbow by Luke, or I should say, not by Luke Richardson, but by Kelly Bookberger. Just a few minutes ago. Richardson a holding penalty here at 10 02 of the second period. The Blues have been outshot in this period 5 to 2. It's been a pretty good period for Edmonton. The Blues have five of their 14 shots on their two power plays. Buck in the Edmonton end. Creighton gets it ahead. Norton intercepts, finds an opening, and clears the puck the length of the ice. So Rob Pearson is out there now with Creighton and Howard Chuck. They're up front. Crab Chuck near his net. On one point with Thronger, a pass for Howard Chuck by him. The length of the ice to Joseph, and he'll backhand the puck all the way back to Grant Fuhr. Fuhr plays it around behind the net near side. Thronger gets it up to Hall, who comes on. Right wing to Howard Chuck into the Edmonton end. He'll backhand the puck behind the net. Ryan Marchman is there. He loses it. Hall back to the far point to Pronger. Back behind the net to Rob Pearson. Howard Chuck in front, but Norton steps in the way of Pearson. Norton gets the puck, then Hull checks him, leaves it for Pearson. Out to the near point to Kraft. Chuck a shot, and a stick saved by Joseph. Blues on the power play, leading 1 0. Pearson in front, and Howard Chuck scores from the left wing. Pearson slides the puck through the crease. Howard Chuck right at the edge of the crease, and he slides it home. Kenny, I don't think Howard Chuck ended up touching the puck. I believe it went off the stick of Todd Marchant directly in front of the net. The pass is going to come across from Pearson. He's trying to he's trying to pass it to Howard Chuck on the other side, but Todd Marchant coming back in front. I believe he deflected it with his stick. Yep. Yes, he did in front. He did. And he went past. Curtis Joseph was over to the point to play it, but you'll see the puck here will just deflect back past where he was off the stick of Todd Marchant and the Blues get a power play goal to lead it 2-0. So Howard Chuck right there and just before the puck gets to him it goes off March but Blues with a goal both teams at full strength now the puck in the Edmonton end. Chatan plays it far side. Dufresne is hit and knocked down. Puck loose at center ice. Noonan kicks at it works in over the line. He's covered and Chatan takes over the Slovakian. He works in on the left wing, not a wait. Right wing for Seeger, another Slovakian. He loses the puck, and Wells clears it out. The goal at 11.09, Rob Pearson will get it. A power play goal, his fifth from Hall and Kravchuk. Now McKinnis steals, works in, side of the net, feeds out in front, and there'll be a penalty as Shane Corson is dragged down. And the play is stopped. The Blues lead it 2-0. 8.05 to go in the second period at the Edmonton Coliseum. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. And picking up the penalty. Interference at 11.55. The Blues 2 for 3 on the power play at center ice. McKinnis, he'll shoot the puck in. Joseph gloves it behind the net, holds on, 
and Mick Magoo stops play. Two to nothing. Blues lead it. McInnes, a power play goal at 3.27 of the first period, set up by Gretzky. Pearson from the corner, centering for Howard Chuck on a power play here in this period at 11.09. The puck going off the stick of Todd Marchand. And now we just get a report on Wayne Gretzky. He will not return the rest of this game. He has a severe headache right now after that elbow by Kelly Bookberger and he will not return to this game. So the great one out for the rest of this one. Olsen with a puck. Far point for McKinnis. Not Olsen. Near side to Hall. Corson's in front. They've got Zezel on the right wing. Here is Hall. A shot. Joseph the save. Rebound. Zezel stop. Stopped again by Joseph is Peter Zezel. Marchman gets the puck and clears it the length of the ice. Some good chances there for the Blues on the power play. We're in the second period. Both teams changing players. Blues up 2-0 in their own end. McKinnis from Olsen. Right wing to Hall. Cutting to the middle over the blue line. Left wing pass for Howard Chuck. He'll slide the puck behind the net to Corson. Far corner to Hall in front for Olsen. And the puck tipped away by penalty killer Dean McCammon. McKinnis gets it to Corson. He'll slide the puck in. Richardson intercepts. Banks the puck off the glass down the ice. McKinnis at his own line. Up to Hall. Hall now to Creighton. In over the line. Creighton to Hall. Near side. In the middle to Howard Chuck. Left point to Olsen. Right point. Pronger a one-timer deflected wide. Howard Chuck centers for Creighton. He has trouble with the puck. And his pass intercepted. And McCammon wheels the puck the length of the ice. Half a minute to go in the penalty to Shatan of Edmonton. Lose a pass too far the length of the ice. Touched by Miranoff. That's an icing against the Blues. They lead 2-0. And they have a power play for another. For winners who wear their hats to the stands. You must be 21 or older. That's coming up Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at Kiel. Here come the Blues on the power play. Power check. Chuck checked. Loses the puck. Gets it back. Fakes a pass to Pronger along the right wing side. Fakes a shot. Feeds left point to Crabchuck. His pass in front knocked away from Creighton. And the Oilers Marsh shot. Now the Oilers back at full strength to Slager to Marsh shot on the right wing. Into the blue zone. A pass in front. Crabchuck intercepts. Nice play by Igor Crabchuck. Ahead to Howard Chuck. Up the left wing into the Edmonton end. Gets the puck back after losing it. Oh, and a pass for Creighton. Tipped away by Slager. An excellent diving poke check. Buck loose behind the Edmonton net. In the far corner, Pearson plays it to McInnes. He'll fire it wide of the net. In front it comes Hudson, a shot. Turned away, he centers. Matal, a shot. And that's blocked. Boy, the Blues have had some good chances in the last few minutes, and the Oilers shoot the puck the length of the ice. McInnes back to touch it. An icing call against Edmonton with 5.26 remaining in the second period. Now, Curtis Joseph with some fine saves in this game is keeping his team, the Edmonton Oilers, in this. and. When Curtis Joseph first signed here, he became a very popular guy instantly as he purchased one of the luxury suites here for the remainder of the season for $60,000. And, and Marchman charges to center ice for Edmonton. Both teams at full strength. Marchman a little awkward shot right to Fuhr, who makes the catch and holds on. Play stop. Four minutes, 34 seconds remaining in the second period. The Blues lead it 2 to nothing. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey.